everybody. I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty, where we women over 50 use great skincare, makeup, and health and fitness to look and feel our best. And today I'm excited to bring you this video on nine makeup mistakes that age us. But first, here's a look at my outfit of the day. All details are listed under the video. And if you're not yet a subscriber, I invite you to subscribe and or give this video a thumbs up. Okay, let's get down to this. And I have learned these makeup tips through the School of Hard Knocks. I came to YouTube five years ago. I wasn't really you know, that good at makeup, quite honestly. But over the five years through doing videos and then seeing myself in the editing bay, I have realized some mistakes that I've been making over the years that have been aging me. And so I thought I would share them with you. Okay, the first tip is to prepare your skin carefully. And basically that is to cleanse your skin, but it is also to exfoliate the peelies. Because at our age, 50 plus, actually I'm 60 plus, our skin just does not turn over at the rate that it did when we were younger. We have old dead skin cells on the top of our skin. Sometimes if we're using tretinoin, we have peelies, and I've been very guilty of that. And I've really been using and loving this Amore Pacific Treatment Enzyme Peel, and it has actually changed. I bought this about a year and a half ago, and I've been using it. It's a big bottle, but now it is called the Treatment Enzyme Peel Cleanser because this is a daily exfoliator that you can use to get off the rough, grungy skin cells that you have lying on your skin. And so basically, do make sure to exfoliate your skin rather regularly, and of course, use a moisturizer and let it dry up for a few moments. Okay, my next tip is to anti-age your eye makeup. And again, I have learned this through the School of Hard Knocks. The first thing I have learned is that it is always very important with our aging eyes to use a primer. And you can use the Milani, I use that sometimes. But I've been using this Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion, and I really do like it in part because of the applicator. It has a little sponge tip applicator here, and it's just easier to put on than the Milani, so I do use that. And what it does for us is, as we get older, we get those little veins and those little crinkles, those little fine lines and wrinkles on our eyes, and this just gives you a nice palette. Not only does it smooth out your fine lines and wrinkles, and it nulls out the redness, it also gives you an even palette to grip that eyeshadow. Very good there. And my second anti-aging eye tip is to cut down on the extreme shimmers. And for those of you who have followed my channel, you know I absolutely love this palette. This is the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. And as you can see, it does have quite a few kind of strident shimmers, and I think it's beautiful. And I have to admit, in the evening sometimes when I'm just going out to a movie with Alan, I might use some of this, especially on the lid. But on a daily basis, I've realized I can't really tolerate that shimmer anymore because I do have a lot of little fine lines all over my eyelids, and I do have a hooded eye that tends to show when I use the shimmer. I have been using and loving, though, this palette, which is the Truth or Bear Morphe Palette. And while some of its shadows have a little bit of a satin finish, they really don't have that intense shimmer. And I've really been loving using this on the lid, which has just a little bit of a satin finish. This is on the brow bone, and then I use this in the crease. And that's another tip, too. When you're doing your crease, I always tended to go to a very dark color. And recently, I've realized that it makes us look a little younger and fresher to not go quite so dark in the crease. So therefore, I've been using that color, which is a very natural brown color, as you can tell. Now, there's another good tip to open up our eyes and kind of make them pop. And that is when we are putting our crease color on our eyelids to take it up a little higher because we all tend to have hooded eyelids that are kind of falling down. And if you just put your crease color right in that crease, you're really not going to see it too much when you open your eyes. And what I do is that I take it higher. I take it up higher. And this is just an empty brush. It's a blending brush. But I just take it a little bit higher because when you do that, it opens up your eyes and makes them pop. Okay, another tip in terms of anti-aging your eyes is to use the correct eyeliner. And I do absolutely love this liner. And if you're still into eyeliner, this is my absolute favorite eyeliner. In fact, I did just purchase it again. I had a $5 off because I went to Kohl's to return something from Amazon. And so this was only like $10, which was great. But this is the Pure On Point 
eyeliner in the color Down to Earth, and I really do like that. It has a self-sharpening tip, which is beautiful. So if you're still using eyeliner, this is a great one. And another good tip is to soften your eyeliner, especially if you're blonde. You really shouldn't be using black anymore. It's too harsh for us. But the main eyeliner that I use on my eyes is actually a powder liner. And you can either do that through taking a darker shade in one of your eyeshadow palettes, or you can use this little Charlotte Tilbury eyebrow pencil. And it is called their Classic Powder Liner. And it goes on very soft on the top of each eyelid there. And it just gives you kind of a nice, more muted line, not nearly so strident. And I will say, this does not go on as smooth as that pure on point liner. That pure on point liner just glides on your upper eyelids and this doesn't. It kind of pulls a little bit on your eyelids. You've got to work with it a little bit because it is a powder. It is not as creamy of an application as a cream liner, but if you're really interested in softening the look of your eyes and giving yourself more of that youthful, more doe-eyed look, not quite so harsh, I absolutely love this Charlotte Tilbury Classic Powder Liner. Now I have an eyelash tip, and actually I have two great tools, and hopefully you're already using a lash curler. That kind of goes without saying. If you want your eyes to be more opened up, more lifted, more bright and shiny, you really do need to use a little lash curler. And I have absolutely been loving this new little tool that I found maybe a month ago. And Angie of Hot and Flashy talked about this and I ordered it and I love it. I think it's six or seven dollars. It's not very expensive at all, but it's a little curved eyelash brush. And what you do is I use primer and then I use mascara and between the primer, I just kind of comb out my lashes to get rid of the clumps because one thing that is very aging as we get older is if we have clumpy mascara on and our eyelashes are not lifted and separated, we just kind of look like we've got too much mascara on and we're trying too hard. I absolutely love this little metal curved comb. Okay, another problem we have that gives us aging looking eyes, older eyes, is that we tend to have grays in our eyebrows, and I certainly do. And I have probably tried maybe 30 eyebrow pencils and almost as many brow gels, but the two areas that we have problems with are number one, our tails tend to shorten as we get older or we just have sparse eyebrows. And I've been absolutely loving this Revlon Color Stay Brow Pencil in the color blonde. And if you're a blonde, they have this color and then they have a darker blonde. I really just love this one, but it is absolutely wonderful. It has a little kind of triangular tip, a nice wide tip, and you can go in and just kind of fill in your sparse area or give yourself some tails. And for a while I was using this to cover my grays and it works fairly well, but recently I've discovered this Anastasia Brow Dip Gel and oh my, it absolutely covers your grays. And I won't add it now because I could really mess up my eyebrows. But basically there it is, that's the color blonde, but it's just a little tiny mascara wand, I guess it's a brow wand, and then you just paint it on your eyebrows and really paint in those, those gray babies. And uh, basically that just blends them in beautifully. And another problem I have is that my eyebrows really don't have much of an arch. And if you also have problems having an eyebrow arch and your eyebrows kind of fall and go flat, it just brings your eyelids down. It just makes your eyes kind of look closed up. To open them up, I always use this NYX Control Freak Brow Gel, and it does absolutely beautiful at keeping your brows totally in place, lifting them up. You can just brush them up into place, and then it just takes a few moments for them to dry, and then you have nice arches throughout the day. Okay, the third area that can be kind of aging is our foundation application. And first, as we get older, although I do like full coverage foundations, it's really better to lighten up on that coverage, maybe to go to a medium foundation and just build it up in the areas that you specifically need it, or you can go to a lighter formulation altogether. And this is the L'Oreal Age Perfect 4-in-1 Tinted Balm, and I've been absolutely loving this. It gives you a super natural look on your skin. It's just a wonderful little gel. It is so light, just light as a feather. It doesn't really add any oil. It also has anti-aging properties, which is just wonderful. And I've really noticed that in the areas where I do have fine lines and wrinkles, like under my eyes and in this area of my face, as you can see, it's kind of smoothed out those fine lines and wrinkles. I absolutely love the L'Oreal Age Perfect brand, and this is a great foundation look. 
And I do have to tell you that in terms of application, the best thing is not to put lots of dots all over your face, just to put some dots in strategic areas on your face. And then what I like to do is I like to take this BK Beauty, I'm dropping it, this BK Beauty 101 foundation brush, and I've absolutely been loving it ever since I got it. It's pretty much all I ever use to apply foundation. And then I take a little of this Porefessional setting spray and I give it like three spritzes, three or four spritzes. And then I just blend in those dots of, of foundation in the middle and then just drag it a little bit out on the edge, a little bit down on the neck. But when you keep the dots primarily in the middle and don't go too heavy, you get a more natural and yet flawless foundation look absolutely love this BK Beauty brush and there is a discount code under the video. Now the fifth makeup mistake we aging beauties make is that we don't use an under eye corrector before our concealer and I have been using this little guy for about two months every single day. I will repurchase it again. I absolutely love it. If you're like me and you have darkness around your eyes and under your eyes, maybe under eye bags, that kind of thing, this peach corrector is absolutely wonderful. And again, I am using a great BK Beauty concealer brush. This is the Angie of Hot and Flashy concealer brush, and it is the A506. And you know, I've got a little bit of darkness going in there, so I'll go ahead and use a little bit of this on that so you can see how it goes. See how that just kind of nulls out the black there. Absolutely love that. I've got a lot right there. I decided to leave it so you could kind of see how it works. And so really, it just kind of nulls out any dark areas that you have on your face, specifically around the nose and under the eyes. And after you've gone in with the peach corrector, you can go in with your normal concealer, and it just makes everything look smooth and more flawless and more even toned. Now, my next tip is about anti-aging blush. And the first tip that you always hear is that we older women should use a cream blush and I really am all for that. It looks really good, but I've been having a hard time getting that cream blush to wear. And so what I typically do is I might go in with the cream blush and then just put a little bit of a powder over it to set it. But my main tip today is to use your color tone, and that is either warm tone or cool tone. Now, I used to be attracted to blushes like this, and I bought this a few years ago. This is great if you're a cool tone skin, if you have a blue undertone, this is the Tarte Blush in Natural Beauty is what it's called. This blush wears forever and it's absolutely gorgeous, but I am really a warm toned skin and so this really does not look great on me. Look how cool that is. But if you're a beautiful cool tone, maybe a brunette beauty, you would really love this. But I really need to be wearing colors more like this. And this is one of my favorite blushes. And this is the CoverGirl True Blend So Flush Blush in 320 Love Me. And this is more of a coral tone blush. And as you can see, I've used it down quite a bit, but it's very, very natural. I'm going to go ahead and take my little BK Beauty brush and just kind of apply a little bit more of that. I absolutely love this. And I love this brush because it is very malleable. You just take it and put the blush on the high portion of your cheeks and then turn it on the side and buff, 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 buff. See how beautiful that looks. And I guess my tip on blushes is when you go to the store, don't look at all the blushes and choose your favorite color. I used to get on here on YouTube and say, oh, I love those fuchsia blushes. Look at that color, it's just beautiful. And it really was in the palette. It looks great in here. And I really just don't like peach as a general rule. I prefer pink. However, I look a lot better with the coral tone blushes. So if you are over 50 like me, in fact, well over 50 like me, then if you're a warm tone skin, use the coral blushes. And if you're a cool tone skin, go ahead and use the pink ones. Now, my seventh anti-aging tip is to blend your makeup well. And this was an area I also used to fall down in a lot until I found this Real Techniques, what is it called? I think it is called the Sculpting Brush, Sculpting Brush. And I don't use this to sculpt, but what I do is when I put a little bronzer under there, a little bit of a contour, and I put my highlighter on, put my blush on, and I did use this Nude Gasm palette, which I absolutely love. I used this brown tone underneath my cheekbones, and then I used this gorgeous champagne color over my cheekbones and down my nose, 
and a little bit over the top of my lip. But basically now, whenever I apply all of those things, I go through with this Real Techniques brush and kind of buff it out. I do that down there too, because that way you don't have the hard edges down the nose there where I applied that contour. So this just kind of blends everything in beautifully so you don't have harsh edges, because really there's nothing more aging than looking at an aging woman with clown-like blush. Now, my next tip I got from Elise Markham Johns' channel, and she is a great YouTuber who concentrates on mature beauty makeup, and she provided this tip to keep our lip corners from going down, because the worst thing is, as we get older, or one of the bad things is, as we get older, our lips tend to go downward. I use facial exercise to try to keep them lifted up, but no matter what you do, you know, it's inevitable that sometimes your lips have a little downturn on the edges, and you don't want to go around kind of looking sour and mean, and you know, that's just not a good look. And what Elise said to do is to concentrate on the inner like 90% of your lips, to not take your lipstick out to the corners and not take your lip liner out to the corners either. And basically, this is one of my favorite lipsticks right now. I would say of all time, because I'm loving it, but I'll inevitably find something else I love. But this is the Maybelline Crayon, Lip Crayon, in the color Keep It Fun. And it's linked below the video. And again, I'll just go about 90% of the way to the outside of the lips. Won't go clear out there. And it does bleed a little bit out there, which is nice because you do want the color out there. And then I'm taking this BK Beauty Lip Liner. I think it's called Luxury Lip Liner, which I do love it. And it is in the color Pink Lady. And there that is, very pretty color. And again, I won't take it clear out to the edge. I'll just take it about 90% of the way. Here we go. And then I've absolutely been loving this Maybelline Lifter Gloss in the color Crystal. And look how ugly that looks, but it's actually very pretty. And it just kind of nulls down the extreme pink look of that and makes it look a little more neutral because I do have a lot of brown in my top. But as you can see, it really doesn't emphasize the downturned corners of my lips. It just makes my lips look pretty nice and pretty even. Well, those were my anti-aging makeup tips, and I have a little bit of a bonus tip for you, and that is that as we age, it is important to have the whole package be one color. In other words, as we age, I think it gets more and more important to follow our seasonal colors. And I was terrible at this. When you're younger and you're a blonde especially, you can get away with wearing black because it looks kind of dramatic. But as I've gotten older, I've realized that all the black in my closet should be left on the bottom half of my body because when I have like solid black up to my face, I look about 10 or 15, 20 years older. It's not attractive. And this top is a little leopard top I have, and it does have some black in it, but it also has some lighter colors and some tan. And the tan is more my color because I am a spring. And lately in my videos, I'm doing the best I can to avoid having harsh, non-seasonal colors up near my face. And I'm also trying to use brighter colors like corals in an orange red or something like that. It looks good on a spring. So as we get older, a bonus tip is to wear our seasonal colors so we look and feel our best. Well, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day, and I just went to a cousin's funeral in Florida over the weekend. He was only 65 years old, and tons of people came to his funeral. It was really beautiful. He obviously had a beautiful life, but it did remind me, especially in our second half, our days can be numbered and life can be short. And I was listening to a YouTuber online, and it was some psychologist. I can't remember who it was, but what he was saying is that basically we never know when our interaction with someone may be our last. And that sounds a little bit depressing, a little bit negative, but it is also true. And you need to ask your question whenever you're interacting with someone, if this were my last interaction with this person, would they remember me well? Would they feel enriched by that interaction? And there's an Oriental philosophy that says, Always remember that death is on your shoulder. And that's kind of along the same lines. Just to remember that your days could be numbered. And as you're going through the day, make sure that you enjoy what you're doing. And also make sure that your interactions with the others around you, with your loved ones, your friends, your family, are as positive as possible. And I did that for one day last week, and I need to do it again. But basically what I did is I went through the whole day, and every time I interacted with someone, I tried to give just a little bit more, maybe give them a compliment, give them a smile, 
make them feel good about themselves, I tried to make sure that each interaction was as high quality as possible. So friends, just for today, as we're going through our days, let's remember that we are lucky to be alive, that this is a privilege. Let's be grateful for every day we have. Let's live in the day. And every time we come upon someone, let's try to give them our best, something a little bit more positive, lift them up, make them feel good because we're never really sure what tomorrow will bring. And we want to make sure we're giving the others around us, those that are important to us, our very best. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.